On December 4th of 1872, just off the coast of the Azores Islands in the Atlantic, a Canadian brigantine ship captained by David Morehouse spotted another vessel about six miles out. This, in and of itself, is not an uncommon occurrence on the open ocean. But as Captain Morehouse took a closer look, he noticed something unusual. The ship was moving back and forth in a very unstable manner. This was an immediate red flag, which led Morehouse to suspect something might be wrong with the sailors. As the two ships grew closer together, Morehouse noticed there seemed to be no crew on deck or captain at the helm. It was at this moment he sent two members of his crew to further investigate the unknown vessel. What these two men would soon come to find out would capture a spark of imagination across the world. The ship was the Mary Celeste, and the captain and passengers? There were none to be found. I'm Bradley Hall, and you're listening to Beyond the Harbor. In 1860, on the shores of a Nova Scotian village, a ship was constructed that would later become known as the Mary Celeste. But before the vanishing voyage could take place, it would first set sail known as the Amazon. The Amazon had her maiden voyage in June of 1861. The task was simple. Carry a cargo hold full of timber from Nova Scotia to London. Captain Robert McClellan would be at the helm during the crossing of the Atlantic. The cargo hold full of timber would eventually make it to its destination in London. However, Captain McClellan would not reach the shores of the British Isles. While en route to London, McClellan fell ill and the crew decided to turn around to get him some much needed medical attention. He would make it back to Spencer's Island and receive medical treatment. However, His condition continued to worsen, and after two days, he ended up passing away due to pneumonia. As this story continues to unfold, McClellan's death during the maiden voyage of the Amazon seems to be somewhat of a foretelling as to the tragedy that would come on the Mary Celeste, coincidence or not. The story of Captain McClellan's death is only the first of many suspicious events that the vessel would encounter during its life on the seas. She would go on to collide with fishing equipment, hit and sink a brig, and eventually get caught in a terrible storm. This storm caused the captain at the time to run her ashore. The damage was so bad, they deemed the ship unseaworthy and abandoned it in place. Not long after claiming the ship was out of commission, the owners decided to sell it for scrap to collect a quick reward. But the new owner, Richard Haynes of New York, had another idea in mind for the salvage wreck. Haynes would go on to spend a substantial amount of money to restore the beaten and battered vessel. Upon completion, it was time to give the Amazon a new name. Because after all, he thought it best to leave the horrible events that came associated with the Amazon buried in the past. Wouldn't you? This obviously did not happen. Otherwise, you would not be listening to me ramble on about a ship that had a few unfortunate events take place in its early lifetime on the seas. The name he would eventually settle on was the Mary Celeste. Benjamin Briggs, a well-respected and seasoned captain, decided to take some of his life savings and invest it in a ship he could captain. This was right around the time the Mary Celeste was getting the final touches put on after a lengthy restoration project. What better way to invest your money as a ship captain than into a newly refurbished ship ready for sailing? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I do not believe Briggs checked into the past history of the Mary Celeste 
under its previous name, the Amazon. Could a Carfax, or in this case, a ship fax report dissuade Briggs from going through on the investment? Probably not. Most captains of this time period loved a good challenge, but they were also very superstitious. So maybe, just maybe, he would have chosen another option. Spoiler alert, he didn't. Briggs would be the new part owner of the Mary Celeste. He would be instated as the captain to be at the helm for her maiden voyage after the renovation project was completed. On October 20th of 1872, the ship was loaded with 1,700 barrels of denatured alcohol. The alcohol was to be delivered to the port city of Genoa in Italy. But just as Captain McClellan in the Amazon's maiden voyage, Captain Briggs also would not be there to see his cargo delivery through. For the voyage, Briggs would have his wife Sarah and their infant daughter Sophia join him. Sophia was only two years old at the time. Meanwhile, their son Arthur would stay behind with the family to continue his schooling. He was seven years old at the time of the departure. Unbeknownst to him, he would soon be living the start of a tragical Disney movie. Many years before the man himself, Walt Disney, would be born to write about it. Captain Briggs would fill out his crew with what would later be recalled as, quote, peaceable and first-class sailors. His own wife, Sarah, would send a letter to her mother and describe the crew as being, quote, quietly capable. All of this to say, the seven crew members Briggs had under his command were well-equipped and experienced sailors that were familiar with all conditions at sea. On November 5th, the loaded-down Mary Celeste with Captain Briggs, his wife, and infant daughter, along with the seven crew members, would pull anchor from Pier 50 in New York Harbor and begin their journey to the port city of Genoa. For the next 20 days, they would sail into heavy winds and face rough seas, as noted in the ship's daily log. Some winds would reach more than 35 knots, making it very difficult for the captain and his crewmen to stay on course. This brings us to November 25th. This would be the last time Briggs would enter information into the ship's daily log. This was noted at around 8 a.m. the morning of. The daily log recorded the current location of the ship in the Atlantic. Court documents indicate this position but unfortunately the daily log transcript was lost in 1885 and I cannot comb through them to get more information, which is a real miss in this case. Regardless of the missing log, court document transcripts do a decent job of filling in some details. This is how we know the exact location of the Mary Celeste on November 25th. This brings us to Captain David Morehouse, who was at the helm of his ship named the De Gracia along with eight crewmen, which happened to be sailing to the same location where the Mary Celeste was headed. The De Gracia left eight days after Captain Briggs set sail on the journey to Dunoa. On the morning of December 5th, Captain Morehouse spotted a vessel about six miles in the distance from the deck of the De Gracia. Something to note here, is this was 10 days after the final daily log Captain Briggs entered on the Mary Celeste. Being in the year of 1872, piracy on the open seas had died down dramatically from what was considered to be the golden age of piracy, which ended around 1730. But pirates wasn't on the mind of Captain Morehouse when he spotted the vessel, even though it appeared to be heading his way. The ship's movements were very unsteady, as if no one had full command of the vessel. This raised several red flags for him, so he decided to move in to get a better idea of what was going on. As they came up on the vessel, they noticed the name written in big, bold letters on the stern. By this point in the show, you should be very familiar with what they saw. Otherwise, I have failed you as a host. They would come to find out that Captain Morehouse's suspicions were correct. There was no one at the helm of the ship and no other crewman to be seen. The ship was completely empty on the top deck. It was time for Captain Morehouse to further investigate the ship. He sent his first mate, Oliver DeVoe, 
along with second mate John Wright, to climb aboard the Mary Celeste. As they made their way down into the cabin, they found no signs of anyone aboard. They checked all the rooms and called out for anyone to answer them, but they received only silence in response. They continued to investigate the seemingly abandoned vessel. They noted several things of importance. The cargo hold of denatured alcohol was still intact, minus nine barrels that were completely emptied. One of the ship's pumps was dismantled, and there was some flooding on the bottom deck of about three and a half feet. This would not be terribly unusual for a ship that had a month of encountering storms at sea. There was enough food stockpiled to last the crew another six months at least on the seas. All the crewmen's gear was still nice and neat in their quarters, undisturbed. They then made their way into the captain's quarters. This is when they noticed the daily log entry that was dated 10 days before, around 8 a.m. on November 25th. As the log noted their current location, it's important to point out that they were close enough to see land. The land being Santa Maria, which was the easternmost island on the Azores. But the most important navigation instruments that would be critical for Captain Briggs were also noted as missing. These important pieces were the chronometer, sextant, navigation book, and the ship's main register. The sails were pretty much beaten and battered up, but after a thorough inspection by Captain Morehouse's crew, the ship was ultimately deemed seaworthy. But perhaps the most important safety piece of a ship was MIA. The lifeboat had been lowered down and was missing. So it is somewhat presumed that they may have just abandoned the ship. But why would anyone abandon a perfectly capable ship deemed seaworthy? For almost 150 years since the disappearance of the Mary Celeste passengers, there have been a wide array of theories as to what happened to them. I've read everything from alien abduction stories to pirates, all the way to sea monsters. Hang around for a minute, and we will take a look into some of the leading theories, and then I'll leave you with my personal thoughts as to what I believe happened to the passengers of the Mary Celeste. This story has caused speculation to the abandonment of the Mary Celeste all over the world, and for good reason. Everyone loves a good mystery. Instead of chasing the ghost story theories of this ship, which admittedly would be fun, we are instead going to take a look at some of the more probable theories that could have happened to the passengers aboard. The prevailing theory at the time the actual events were taking place is that there was some sort of foul play at hand. After Captain Morehouse and crew found the Mary Celeste and did an initial investigation, they then sailed it back to Gibraltar to try and claim a salvage reward on her and collect payment. A quick side note here, this proves the Mary Celeste was indeed seaworthy. This immediately made the court suspicious and understandably so. However, there are a couple of things wrong with this theory. For one, the De Gratia didn't set sail until eight days after the Mary Celeste left harbor. It was said that the Celeste was a faster ship, and thus it would have been almost impossible for Captain Morehouse to catch them after eight days of delay. Also, during the investigation by the courts, they found no evidence of a struggle or foul play on the ship after extensive research. Not to say they wouldn't have had ample time to clean up and destroy such evidence, as it took them 10 days to sail the Mary Celeste back to port, but the investigation was very thorough and nothing worthy of mentioning turned up. It was also fairly well known at the time that Briggs and Morehouse not only knew each other, but were friends. So for now, 
I'm going to say that I do not believe there was any foul play involved from Captain Morehouse or his crewmates. I also do not believe pirates are to blame. Think about it for a minute. What are pirates most famous for? The most valuable items were still intact on the ship when they found it. Plus, there wasn't a skull and crossbones flag raised on her mast. Just saying. Let's explore another theory. We know that when the first and second mate from the De Gratia boarded Mary Celeste, they noted that one of the two pumps was disassembled. We can only speculate at this point as to why, but it quite possibly could have been clogged up and unable to pump out water from the hull, leading someone to try and troubleshoot the issue. Surely this pump being down wouldn't have been enough to cause the captain to abandon his ship in fear of it sinking. It was only three and a half feet of water when it was discovered, not to mention the other pump was perfectly capable of taking care of that issue. Now let's explore my theory and thought process behind this story that admittedly may be several theories weaved into one. I believe there was a good chance one of these may have happened on November 25th. There were nine barrels of denatured alcohol found empty in the cargo hold. These barrels could have leaked out and caused rampant fumes that may have been alarming to Briggs. Since the lifeboat was missing, I believe Briggs may have ordered passengers onto it just until the fumes had time to disperse. He may have had fear of it causing an explosion or it being deadly to inhale and thus decided it best to leave the ship until the threat had ceased. In my mind though, no matter what, I feel that something caused such a fear in Captain Briggs' eyes that he felt his only option was to bail out. We may never know what exactly that was, but I think that's also part of the fun and the mystery of what the world has come to know as the ghost ship. Whether it be aliens, pirates, or some sort of natural phenomenon, what we know for sure in hard evidence is that there were indeed 10 souls aboard the Mary Celeste. There were 10 lives forever lost at sea, never to be heard or seen from again. And, as unfortunate that is to all the families involved, this is the main driving factor in the legend of the Mary Celeste. It has all the right ingredients to pique the curiosity of our minds and allow it to wander to places normally it wouldn't go. So, just what happened to the 10 individuals aboard the Mary Celeste in 1872? I'll leave you with the facts so that you can take it from here and decide for yourself. And while people like me and you keep pondering on this idea, this will keep the legend of the ghost ship alive and well. This episode was written and produced by me, Bradley Hall. If you enjoyed this story as we explored the history of the Mary Celeste and her 10 missing passengers, please be sure to like, rate, and subscribe. You can find us on social media by searching for Beyond the Harbor. Questions, comments, and feedback can be left at my website. Thanks for listening.